Hey everyone, um, this video is the lecture on climate and weather. Um, we did this in class on Tuesday of the second week of school. Um, if you have any questions, make sure that you write them down and bring them to me the next time you see me in class. And let's just get started on this presentation. First of all, we need to discuss the difference between climate and weather. Climate is long-term weather patterns of an area. Weather is the current state of the atmosphere, short-term variations. For example, in Laredo, it might rain from time to time. We cannot say that our climate is rainy because we know that our climate is usually dry and very, very hot. It might rain from time to time. That's the weather at that time period, but in long term, our climate is hot and dry. That's the difference. What causes different climates in different parts of the world? Well, there's different factors. Um, temperature factors include where a place is located as far as latitude is concerned. The closer it is to the equator, the warmer it's going to be because it's receiving more direct light from the sun. The further it is away from the equator, then the colder it gets because the light is just not hitting it directly. Um, altitude has a lot to do with it, how high above the ground a place is. The higher it is in elevation, the colder it's going to get. Ocean currents are also important because they're moving winds with them and either warm or cold water. And then, of course, marine versus continental. If a place is closer to the ocean, it's going to be a lot fresher than areas that are in the middle of continents. They're usually um, warmer. Rainfall has a lot to do also with uh, the, the climate. Um, latitude will determine how much rainfall you get. Um, near the equator, again, there's going to be a lot of rainfall. And also, high up in mountains, they used tend to get rainfall as well. These are the most important lines of latitude that you need to know. The equator is at zero degrees. And the closer something is to the equator, the warmer it gets. As you move out, you have the Tropic of Cancer. Those are 23.5 degrees north and the Tropic of Capricorn at 23.5 degrees south. Anything that falls between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn is going to have a tropical cli climate. Then you have the Arctic Circle, 66.5 degrees north and 66.5 degrees south. Anything that uh, falls above or below the Arctic Circle is going to have a polar climate. Right? Again, tropics, then we have temperate and polar. Tropics be, are between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn, close to the equator. Everything there is the tropics. Between the Arctic Circle and the um, Tropic of Capricorn and Cancer, you have temperate. And then above the Arctic Circle, you have polar climate zones. So the tropics, those are the places that have the most exposure to sunlight. They um, generally are very warm, and they are again between the tropics of Capricorn and the tropic of Cancer. In the temperate climate zone, those fall between 23.5 degrees and 66.5 degrees latitude north and south their temperatures tend to be a little bit milder. They're not going to be as warm as places that fall in the tropics. And then there's the polar climate zones it's at 66.5 degrees or above. And those are in the north and south poles. In those areas, temperatures get extremely cold. We have the issue of climate change at hand. And um, when you think about this, of course you don't have anyone next to you to interview, but think about how, uh, how the weather has been changing lately. Think about Laredo in this last spring and what the weather was like. Um, we had heavy rains and um, it, it was cold 
for a longer period of time than usual and that is because the climate patterns on earth are changing as adults we start to wonder what's going on um, because students are experiencing extreme weather at an age where they believe that it's normal for that to be the state of the climate, but it isn't. Um, I can't link the video to this video, but I will add it to the uh, to the the playlist so you can watch it on your own. But there's a video about climate change that is quite interesting that I want you to watch. Another thing that we need to discuss when we talk about uh, climate is El Nino, and El Nino affects Texas and uh, Mexico, so it's very important that we know what that is. Um, El Nino is a warming of the surface water in the eastern and central Pacific Ocean. That is the ocean that is on the western side of the United States and Mexico. And it happens about every 4 to 12 years, and it causes unusual global weather patterns. El Nino is responsible for the increase in water that we saw in, um, in, in this spring. And they say that it's going to continue, continue to cause a lot of uh, storms um, in the upcoming months, all the way through winter. El Nino brings very heavy rain to the western South American and drought to the eastern Australia and Indonesia. So the water starts moving um, towards this side of the world and so um, Australia and Indonesia are going to experience drought because all the rainfall has moved to this part of the world. And um, a lot of rainfall can also be very bad for us because it can cause flooding. So if you were watching the news during the, uh, the spring, you'd notice that there were several deaths in Texas due to heavy flooding um, and a lot of destruction. So a lot of rainfall isn't always great either. And that concludes our slideshow. If you have any questions, do make sure to write them down and come see me in class. I'd be happy to answer them for you. And thank you for watching.